Hi everyone, this is Fahad Meza and I welcome you to the channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at Atom of Thoughts. Atom of Thoughts is a framework that introduces a new approach to improve the efficiency of reasoning in LLMs during test time. Not only I am going to explain this framework in very very simple words, but also I am going to explain all the terms which have been used in frameworks and to top it off, I'm also going to show you a very very quick demo hands-on as how to get it installed and then how you can use it in order to do the test timings. So when we say that to improve the efficiency of LLMs during test time, test time is a phase during which a trained model is applied to new unseen data to make predictions or solve tasks. This approach employs a Markov process where transitions between states depend only on the current state without the need for historical context. So it reduces computational waste associated with maintaining extensive reasoning history that doesn't contribute to solving the present problem. If you look at this diagram from their, their paper, it gives you a bit more clarity on what I just said. In Atom of Thought, complex questions are deconstructed into a directed acyclical graph or DAG. A DAG is a <clears throat> structure representation where nodes are arranged without cycles, ensuring a clear hierarchical progression. And then these nodes are further extracted or extended or contracted into independent atomic states, each requiring only current information for transitions, same to those in a Markov process. So atom of thought or AOT avoids retaining irrelevant historical information that optimizes both reasoning performance and resource allocation during test time. This framework can function independently or as an enhancement for existing test time scaling methods like chain of thought which organizes reasoning as a sequence of linear steps and forest of thoughts which involves exploring complex branching paths similar to a network of trees. Atom of thought integrates seamlessly with these methods leveraging existing structures while focusing on current reasoning states. So let's first get it uh, installed from their repo and yes they have shared the repo here which I will drop the link to it in video's description. You can also access the paper from it. And it's a very, very well written paper, by the way. It's not that hard to understand, especially if you keep the context described in this video. You don't need a PhD in machine learning to understand this atom of thought. So before I install it and show you the quick demo, let me give a huge shout out to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM for this video. If you're also looking to rent a VM or GPU or CPU on very, very affordable cheap prices, you can find the link to their website in video's description with a discount coupon of 50% for range of GPUs. This is the VM I'm going to use. And first up, let me create a virtual environment with Conda. While it creates it, let's talk slightly a bit more about this, <clears throat> especially the experiments on this AOT. So experiments conducted on six benchmarks demonstrated AOT's effectiveness, particularly in multi-hop reasoning, which are the tasks requiring multiple interconnected steps. And that is the main idea behind reasoning. And if you look at the Hotpot QA dataset, it has performed really well on it. Hotpot QA is designed to evaluate models on such tasks where the steps are interconnected. With AOT, the GPT-40 mini model from OpenAI outperformed other models significantly, including a 10.6% gain over DeepSeq R1. Can you believe that? So DeepSeq R1 is a reasoning model, works on <clears throat> chain of thought and some other customized things from DeepSeq. GPT-40 mini is not a reasoning model, but when it was evaluated with the after using it with AOT framework, it performed better than DeepSeq R1. So that is the thing with it. So let's go back to my terminal and my environment is created. Let's git clone the repo of Atom or as they call it um, AOT. So it's a very small repo that's done. Let's install 
all the requirements for, for it. So I'm just going to use OpenAI's model. So of course, if you are using that, you would need to have the OpenAI's AP key, which you can grab from platform.openai.com. Once you have done this, you will need to create a quick file called as API key.py. This is where you need to put in your API key. So let me open it in VS code and show you how you can do that. So this is the code of the repo. Now from here, just click on API key.py Python file, which you just created. And then here, just put in your API key, which as I said, you can grab from platform.openai.com. That is a paid option. So let me put in my key here and then uh, I will go back. And I have saved my key. Let me clear the screen. Now, in order to evaluate the performance of AOT on a specific data set such as math, maybe you can run this command. Let me quickly paste the command and then I will explain what exactly this command is doing. So this command is simply evaluating the performance of AOT data set where I'm using math. You can even go with GSM 8K, BBH, MMLU, Hotpot QA or long bench. And then we have start and end. So this is primarily the range of examples to evaluate. So 0 to 10 means that start 0 and 10 means that uh, first 10 examples, you can reduce it if you don't want to spend too much um, money on your API calls. And then I'm specifying the model and then the and that's it, I believe. So let me quickly run this. And you can see that it is running and performing the math tasks. And while it runs, let's talk a bit more about um, this atom. So if you ask me to just summarize it in like a uh, few words, I would say that atom of thought really enhances LLM's efficiency during test time by prioritizing critical current insights over historical complexity, which is same as how humans tackle and streamline complex problems for efficient resolution. And this all has started from deep sea carbon's reasoning because it tries to mimic what humans do and atom of thought is just is taking it one nosh up. Okay, let's go back here to see what is happening. It is already done uh, eight tasks out of 10 and that is all done. So it says this is accuracy and this is how quick that was. And it's as accurate as it gets and in a very, very quick fashion and accuracy is flawless too. Also, if you want to check out the data set, you can again go back there to their experiment folder in data and you see that in the math, these are the test.json. Similarly, you can check the hotpot QA, which I just was mentioning earlier. This is a hotpot QA. You can also check at the same benchmark on it. So for instance, you will go back, run that command with hotpot QA with the same example, then it is going to uh, run that on that test.json, which I just showed you. And then it is going to give you the accuracy and all that. So let it run to see, shouldn't take too long. You see that the ETA is just few seconds. There you go. Again, there was one on salt and then um, accuracy is just close to 90%, which is quite good. I would say not bad at all. And it's not an easy benchmark, by the way. And then I'm not sure if it uh, works with MMLU, but I'll just quickly check it. Let me run it in real time, ML, MMLU. There you go. So let's see how much accuracy is there on this MMLU one, because that is also quite uh, important benchmark. And if you don't know, MMLU stands for Massive Multitask Language Understanding. It's quite a comprehensive evaluation suite designed to assess the multitask language understanding capabilities of these LLMs across 57 diverse subjects ranging from math and history to law and medicine. So it measures both the breadth and depth of a model's knowledge and its ability to reason across different domains and task types. There you go. You see, it is now come down to 50%. So MMLU is quite, quite, you know, stringent, I would say. Maybe I'll just increase it. I'll say, okay, let's do the 50 examples. So this is going to take a bit of a time. So let it run to see how the MMLU performs on this. 
I think the data is malformed in their um, JSON file, so that is why it gave me the key error. So that is why I've just gone with the 21, just to check out if the score improves from 50% or not. And there you go with 20 steps, it has improved. So I think if we broaden the scope of this test, I think the score is going to improve. But look, I believe a pretty good advancement. And let's see if there is any other model which comes up just on the basis of this atom of thought. So very, very keen to test it out when once it's out. Let me know what do you think. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And before I let you go, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Igent Bot. Agent bot lets you effortlessly deploy um, sorry, a, a personalized knowledge bot across platforms like Discord, Slack and others. It is ideal for open source tech communities and startups that provide user support and I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Thanks for all the support.